We're out here doing some birding, looking for some plants. In fact, we've got one very special plant we're in search of today, an orchid. I won't reveal yet, but I'm sure the icon for this video will give it away. Regardless, already seen some incredible plant species. We've got wild geranium and blue phlox here. Now, blue phlox is a really variable species. A lot of phlox are. And uh, you can get a lot of different colors, flower sizes, that all those goodies. But it's pretty to see it, as is the geranium here. Geranium maculatum. This has got a very explosive seed dispersal mechanism. It's, seeds will just shoot off from the ovary. You can get a good distance, too. Two really nice early wildflowers offering pollinator resources. Sarah's got something here. What is it? It's a buckeye. Oh, look at that. Doesn't smell good. Really? What's it smell like? Resinous. Resinous. A little stinky. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Regardless, it's pretty. It's probably our most common. It's probably our most common buckeye. Definitely our most common buckeye. I don't know what I'm talking about here. But uh, we've been seeing a lot of birds nectaring at the flowers. Things like orioles, kinglets. Got a couple of nice members of the carrot family here. One is not quite in bloom yet. This is black snake root. It's kind of a nondescript little umble there with some yellow flowers. And it's pretty common in the understory here. I don't think it was browsed heavily when most of these woods were used for cattle grazing. But we also have this wonderful sweet Sicily, a licorice root. I forget which one it is. I'll put the common name underneath here. But such a delicate looking plant, kind of fuzzy, uh, but seems to withstand frost pretty well. It got pretty cold here the last couple of nights and these are doing just fine. Wild ginger's all leafed out, but still flowering surprisingly. Look at that, underneath this tall canopy. Probably fungus gnat pollinated, but no one really knows for sure. Got a charming little population of cream-colored violet here. Nice subtle striping on the inner lip there, but largely a cream-colored flower. Distinct, sits taller and gets these toothy stipules at the base of the leaf here. Seems to like some dappled shade. So if you want to know if a May apple is going to flower or not, you got to look at each stem and count the number of leaves. Here we have a stem with only a single leaf. This is sterile. It will not reproduce this year. But here we have a stem with two leaves. And look at that. A beautiful May apple bloom. And this is by no means the largest they can get. They can get absolutely huge. And they're non-rewarding, interestingly. There is some pollen, but absolutely no nectar. And... They also will not self-pollinate, so big clonal patches of mayapple generally don't form a lot of fruits. They need to be outcrossed, which is a problem if you're non-rewarding, like I said. And so it's been found that these plants actually benefit from being around other plants like phlox and licorice root that do reward pollinators because it means there's more pollinators hanging around in the area and more of them are going to fall for the trick. Pretty neat ecology. And in places like this where there's box turtles, they're the main seed dispersers for this plant. May apple seeds germinate much better after they pass through the gut of a box turtle. Do you see what I see? Got a rattlesnake fern here with fertile frond. Now this is, uh, I guess, a sister lineage. I never know the right way to say it to most of the ferns we're familiar with and they are extremely dependent on mycorrhizal fungi, not unlike orchids. They will actually live as a protocorm in the soil entirely off of the mycorrhizal fungal connections that they make until they have enough energy to start producing a leaf uh, and giving back in photosynthesis. So I guess, like orchids, all of these start out as fungal parasites. They are such interesting ferns. I love that look.
All right, always a great day when you get to see some woodland poppy. Kind of a conservative species, generally doesn't hang around in forests that are heavily disturbed. So that's a good sign that there's a pretty intact understory here. So great water leaf's kind of a shapeshifter, if you will, when it's young. Its basal leaves look like this, all nice and mottled and textured. By the way, look at those rhizomes, or stolons, I guess. But then as it grows throughout the year, it gets these larger, solid green leaves, followed by nice purple flowers. Look at that. So many of them. Hey, this is fun find. We've got some false mermaid weed all over the floor here. One of those strange dicots that's three merce, meaning it's more like the lily family and that its flowers come in parts of three. Not a terribly showy plant, but a nice little oddball mesic forest soil native. And right over here, we've got ourselves some dwarf larkspur, the finium. So beautifully colored, it's like blowing out the color on this camera right now. But uh, yeah, flowers a lot like what you'd expect out of a delphinium. Also very toxic like most delphiniums. But a great woodland species to find around here. And I can see in the back, just beyond this tree fall here, there's a few more plants. And a bluebell, just barely hanging on. All right, sedge heads, here's one for you. Wide-leaved sedge, Carex albersina. Definitely living up to its name. Not totally in flower yet, but... Oh yeah, actually, look at that. The male flowers are at least blooming. Cool. It's a nifty looking sedge, and I have to give a big shout out to my buddy Paul Markham for uh, helping me identify that. First one near the trail. Got some Jack in the Pulpit here in blue. Nice green morph. There's a lot of variety in these. In fact, some suggest there should be different species. There's definitely subspecies, but this is an inflorescence of an aeroid, of course, and down there are the flowers. Fungus gnats pollinate these. It's a trick. I don't think there's any reward in their form. Cool native aeroid. And here is the plant we came to see today. The yellow lady slipper orchid. Cyperpedium parviflora variety. Parviflora. I think this variety is the taller of the two. Just larger, more robust plant overall. Golly. Look at that bloom. A lot of good plants around here right now. Mayapple, trillium, wild ginger, toothworts. Snake roots, carrots, bluebells. It's a good spot. Now this bloom smells nice and it certainly looks nice, but it's a trick. It's all a ruse. There is no reward in here. Bees that are lured in by the smell and the look hit this back board here, fall down into the lip, and then they follow a patch of translucent patches here. Translucent cells, if you will, on the back of the flower that let in light, which tells them that's where escape is. And they crawl up through these tubes and out that little hole there. And in doing so, they're squeezing by the anthers in there, picking up pollen and depositing it if they've done it before. I'll put a link to my uh, Cyperpedium, or uh, put a link to my Lady Slipper video if you haven't seen it yet. It's all about the reproduction in orchids like this. Got a nice mixed age stand here. Some young plants, not fully in bloom yet over there, but this beautiful specimen here. Now these are such a good sign of ecosystem health. Orchids can be very sensitive to certain types of human disturbance, as well as poaching. Their numbers just do not recover quick enough to keep them sustained on the landscape when we enter the equation. And uh, to find plants like this, you're finding good mycorrhizal communities. Orchids require fungus to germinate and grow. 
and there's not an overabundance of deer because deer treat these like candy. These are some of the first plants to go when deer populations get really high. And uh, yeah, of course poaching. These plants do not survive transplants, so anyone that digs them up to put them in their garden is pretty much sentencing them to death. Not to be saying that they can't be grown in a garden under the right kinds of circumstances and if you can get ethically sourced plants, but it's best to leave wild plants like this in the wild. Look at that, we even have some here with last year's seed pot. Still attached. Very nice. Healthy population of lady slipper orchids. Long may it be that way. Now here's how you can be sure that a lot of people don't come down here. A nice patch of wild ginseng. The people know where this is, snatch it up. It's sold to overseas markets for its purported medicinal value, but here's a bunch of three prongers. So nice to see this plant in healthy numbers. And I'll leave you with this for today. Fossilized remains of an ancient seabed, some crinoids, whatnot. We have all this ancient life sitting just below all this current life. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, check out the podcast.